What up, players? It's Wallboss Tail in this mud, hanging out, painting up some Empire troops. Carl Franz was supposed to be here today, but he got caught in traffic on uh, his Griffin. They're stuck in traffic, so they couldn't make it. Um, also, it's midnight, so I don't think my lady boss sleeping in the next room would be very appreciative if I uh, was hanging out with Carl Franz, screaming and acting like a bunch of fools. But here we are, we started painting up this Auslander. I've painted him up to pretty, pretty nice tabletop quality. Um, we're not nearly done yet though, we don't have the shades and highlights done, but to get to this point, these are the colors you'll need. Abaddon Black, in no particular order. Celestra Gray. Bugman's Glow, Cadian Flesh Tone, Dryad Bark, Corn Red, Othuan Gray, Balthazar Gold, Lead Belcher, Zandri Dust, XV88 Mornfang Brown <laughs> I need a new pot of that Doombull Brown And Go Carax Stone I believe that's all you need for this Very simple color scheme Um, very Very simple So that, that means that you just need to be careful When doing it that it's Um, you don't get screwed up if that makes sense. You want to make sure you do a good job of it. So uh, thanks for watching everybody. I hope you guys like it. Um, please continue to watch for more Empire videos. I've got a box of Demi Griffin Knights. I've got uh, some great swords that I'm going to unbox and hopefully paint up a little bit. And yeah, we're, we are going to finish this guy up with washes, shades, and highlights in the next video. And then after that, move on to the next province, the Rakeland. Thanks for watching everybody. Latest players. Alright, players, so we're gonna get started painting up this firelock of Verlagen. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna. Now, first thing I did was I primed my model in duplicate color matte gray spray on primer. So the gray looks very similar to a non primed model straight off the sprue, but you can tell the plastic straight off the sprue is still kind of shiny. And with the matte, coat of primer on my model is not. First color we're going to use is Bugman's Glow. I have my wet palette next to me so that I can thin my paints down. Always want to thin your paints. You might have to do more than one application, but in the long run, it's a lot better for your models. Yeah, so welcome everybody to another tour of the Empire video. making our way through all of the provinces of the Empire in the Warhammer Fantasy figure range. Looks like I didn't, looks like I missed the contact point for his hand here onto his sleeve, so hopefully that won't cause me too much trouble as I continue painting this part up, but if need be, I might have to convert it just a little bit. Some of you might think when you thin your paints down, oh shoot, I can't, like I think I used too much water, I can see the gray popping up from underneath 
my paint. And let me just tell you, don't get discouraged. Don't add more paint to your mixture, just get it on. And if anything, that first layer of paint is going to be like, almost like a glaze rather than a layer of paint. And that's all right. Because once it's dry, hey, you can add a little bit more paint to the concoction, paint it right back on. The worst thing to do is to have a change of heart while you're painting and say, oh, I can see the base coat, or I can see the, the model underneath the plastic of the model or the color that I painted on before. I'm not happy. I'm going to go and open my pot up and just dab my brush in and paint straight from the pot. You do not want to do that. It's better to have some gray plastic showing through where the paint is a little too thin and then just go back later and fix it. <clears throat> okay, now for the feather. I'm going to attack that first so that we have a nice bright color. As we move on, we're going to use corn red. Hope you guys like the, the Fluff Hunter video I did today. I was filming it uh, at my workplace. I was on a lunch break finished my lunch and um, I had some time before the bell rang so I thought I'd knock out a Fluff Hunters video. Union mandated lunch break. And it's been really hot here. I don't know how it is where all of you guys are but they usually have these things here in what you call trade winds and I feel like there haven't been any. It's just been really hot and no wind. It's not good. Okay, so Osland, one of the reasons why I've been kind of stuck, I haven't really gotten farther with my tour of the Empire, almost, I want to say I gave up, is because I don't really care for Osland's paint scheme, the black and the white. So, um, I'm going to try to see if I can do the other parts first. Mornfang Brown next for the mustache and the hair. Now, um, ideally, I should have picked a head that had a beard on it. For those of you who saw my Fluff Hunters video, you know that the men of Osland grow big bushy beards to ward themselves off from the cold because the climate is so harsh. Uh, I was looking for my Sigmar's heirs and uniforms and heraldry of the Empire book. Couldn't find either of them when I was cleaning the room yesterday. So number one, that tells me I gotta organize my room a little bit better various Warhammer stuff all over the place. Number two, it tells me that um, I really am not as prepared for this video as I, as I could be, but the Firelocks of Fernargan, Katie and Flesh Tonex, their story is so cool that I definitely wanted to use that as the inspiration for this model. The tricky thing about using older fluff, like from the Warhammer fantasy roleplay, is that the second edition was geared towards the Storm of Chaos, that big global campaign that um, had people very divided on whether or not it was worth all the time and effort by Games Workshop to have this global campaign for people to play either as one of the good guys or the bad guys. Um, so Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 2nd Edition was very, was pretty much geared around it, was written to incorporate everything about it. Archaeon, the Everchosen's armies invading the Southlands, um, just the, the trail of devastation he left in his wake. If you look at Warhammer Fantasy 1st Edition, it's a lot of high fantasy 
um, character driven stuff, the armies and the giant battles, fantastic races kind of take a back seat to the all the human elements, social interactions, and all that kind of stuff, which I love. I love that part of role playing because it lets me, you know, work my my skills as a performer. Without being able to do that though, or um, because a lot of the places where you go in Warhammer 2nd Edition are devastated by Archaeon's passing. Everybody is kind of morose and flagellants are walking around everywhere talking about the end of the world and how Sigmar has abandoned the people. It's very, it's very different from the, the court intrigue of adventures like Power Behind the Throne different social adventures, which I really, really liked from Warhammer Fantasy. First edition, we're gone. Of course, they came out with a lot of stuff. You could redo them. But, yeah, what are you gonna do? Okay, sorry if this is blurring in and out. I brought out my cutting pad, as you can see, because I was sick and tired of looking at all the funky stains on my table. Abaddon Black. Let's get started. Also, ideally, it would have been cool to have a... have a great sword figure to um, paint up with all the slashes, but that's okay. What I would have done would have been like to paint the slashes in one color, or even a state trooper with the with the poofy sleeves, uh, paint the slashes predominantly in one color, like all black, and then on the inside have red accents. Or the opposite, paint a sleeve in all white, and then have red accents. Oh my gosh, the new Dark Elf pictures were just leaked. There goes all my money, again. I try not to talk too much about things that are going on at the time of the filming of these videos because I'm making this video now, but somebody who wants to make an Auslan army a year from now, after the whole hoopla with Dark Elves is done, he'll be like, what? What are you talking about? So it's kind of dating my video here. At the time of this filming, the Dark Elves, the 6th edition. Were not even released. There, so as you can see, the black kind of shows up pretty nicely. Sorry, I, every time I peek over to check, I see that it's uh, all blurry, so I apologize. Celestial Gray, you want to shake that up because it's a thicker pigment, it's a foundation or a base paint. So it's very usually very thick and needs a little bit of thinning down on a wet palette. So I was thinking, what kind of white did I want to go with? A creamy white that starts off with like brown in the shadows and builds up. And then I thought, yeah, you know, I'm gonna go with the kind of bluish or gray fade up to white rather than a creamy, creamy gray or brown. I don't know if that makes any sense to you guys. Basically what I'm saying is that I could have started with a color like Rackarth Flesh, which is more of a cream tone, and then highlighted up to white. And when you do that, you have like that cream off-white color in the recesses. I decided to go with this, I call it a blue, or a, a cooler, not blue, a cooler, because 
it uh, is not does not have any brown tones or accents to it. So you want good brush control, you want to make sure you thin down your paint, and you want to make sure you don't paint on too much at one time. I've seen many a model suffer from an overzealous painter who saw the, the, um, the bare model plastic peeking out and wanted to cover it just by lay adding on layer after layer of paint. And then trying to move it around while it's still wet and it's just not moving. So you don't want that to be you. Thin your paints and add on a little bit at a time. Very cool. So this works for state troopers, for anything in your army, any of the cavalry guys, anybody, even, I would say you probably don't want to give, paint your uh, free company or your militia with these colored schemes because they're not um, state troops. They're not funded by their city state. As uh, also like with flagellants, They are just like a rabble of crazy, crazy guys that walk around. They don't really have much of a uniform. Just brown, dirty rags. All right, that is looking pretty good. I'm gonna get the devotional script on the rifle in just a bit, but first we're going to take dryad bark and we're going to paint the uh, leather and straps. You could also go with a, a reddish brown, like Mornfang brown. You could even go all the way up to like a XV88 for like a reddish brown leather. But for, for this leather, I decided to go with this dark, chocolatey, dry at bark brown. I think it's um, it's going to have give us the best opportunity to do some like cream-colored highlights and uh, stick out from the rest of the model more than Mornfang Brown would. But that's just up to, that's just mine. It's really up to you. That's my uh, idea for these straps. You could also, like I said, do XV88 to create a leather kind of looking bag, or the more traditional. Whenever I paint, I usually do a, or sometimes I'll do a, a more fang brown leather, and either of those will work. This is, what is that? I'm going to say that this thing is, is that his gunpowder bag? I don't know. Hmm, mysteries. I am gonna paint his hat in Mornfang Brown.
always want to make sure you turn your model every angle so that you can check to make sure there's you hit all the angles. All right, doing pretty good, I think. I think he looks he's looking pretty good. Steel light, steel legion drive is going to be the color of the rifle stock. And just all the wood. Oh man, I just can't I can't stop thinking about those new darkos. Thing that looks really good about them is that they it looks like they have uh, updated so much of the old line almost like the dark elves the dark eldar rather except with the dark eldar they overhauled the whole thing this one looks like you even though they're they've moved so much to plastic um it still has a little bit of the old dark elf um, warrior kit that aesthetic to it oh man i'm so excited can't wait to get that Medusa Lady Cauldron of Blood Kit. Oh man. Tutorials. Didn't I paint one before? I think I painted a Dark Elf. Yeah, it's that sorceress model. So cool. I'm gonna say it looks like a bell. Is it a bell? Is this a bell that's hanging off of it? Okay, you know what? I'm gonna say it is. Because it's my model. It's my model, Daddy! Daddy, I want to paint a bell on his on his on this model. I want to paint it now. I'll let you paint the bell when we get home, Baruka. But Daddy, I want to paint the bell now. Such a great movie. Oh my gosh. Johnny Depp. Why did you have to ruin my childhood? Oh, I said, I <laughs> mentioned that I'm painting Lead Belcher. Ah. Uh, um, Lead Belcher. idea what this is, but it's going to be Lead Belcher for now. I know a lot of people that don't play Empire because of all of the quote-unquote fiddly bits, and uh, yeah, it's not it for if you're deciding to go for like a horde kind of army, masses of troops and infantry, they're kind of like the Blood Angels in that there's just almost what seems to be an unreasonably high amount of fiddliness. Extra details that sometimes even get obscured by the way you have to glue the model together and position it. I'm thinking of the state troopers off the top of my head, but I mean there's so much detail packed into the scroll work and the bits and bobs hanging off of the model. Okay. I missed one little strap for the triad bark. And also, dried bark is going to be used on the shoes. I think that's what I said. Is that what I said? Dried bark for the shoes?
and add a little bit more cornbread to the hat. Wondering what color to do for this uh, scrap of cloth there, the bayonet holder. I think I'm gonna, yeah, you know what, I'll do red. So corn red onto the little scarf at the end. That'll be nice, those two, two spots of red, uh, spot color. Been getting lots of comments and questions and messages and stuff. I hope I'm responding to everybody accurately. Last thing we're gonna do is the belt, so lead belcher for the buckle on the back. Now, like I said, this is just this model. If you're doing Osland, if uh, a great sword like I was planning on doing earlier, if you're doing state troopers, kind of use the same techniques and the same ideas. Oslin is definitely quartered, so you would not have black leggings and uh, a white top or vice versa. I think most of the fiction and the fluff and the uniform designs have shown that the models are in like half-half. Or not half-half, but uh, gosh, I'm saying, um, quarters. Distracted because I'm looking for. Here we go. Doombull Brown for the handle wraps of the two knives. Doombull Brown is like this nice rusty, rusty red kind of color. Hey guys, we are uh, just about done. Not sure if I got this far in the last video. Doombull Brown, the wrappings for all of the daggers. So if you've got anything with like handles or handle wrappings, like a, a short sword in a holster or uh, the wrapping on a bayonet or on a dagger, then that's, that's where you paint them, okay? So that's where a guy is now. I kind of let everything dry. The last thing we want to add is... Where's my Sandry dust? Do you want Sandry dust? Igor. Yes, Master. Can I have the Zandri dust? This goes for any uh, purity seals. Oh, I didn't put it on a white palette. This kind of painted straight from the pot. That's okay. I do that a lot. Using a wet palette is a is a um, is a goal of mine that I want to use it all the time. But sometimes I forget. If you forget, just wipe off the excess paint. Try not to smear the job you've already done, and it should be fine. There is your guy. I'm gonna do um, just a little highlight on his mustache and his hair so that it takes it away from that color of the of the hat, <clears throat> which is that, that Mornfang Brown. And we're gonna use XV88. So I think we're gonna be going blonde with this guy. Mm. 
So when highlighting, try to do single strokes. Pull the pull the paint down, if that makes sense. Like dab a little bit of the paint near the top, and then using short controlled brush strokes, you pull the paint down as you go. So let me show you with the hair. Very cool. Okay, and um, what we're gonna do is take some, where is my both one gray? Yeah, I'm gonna get up to the white scar chest. Talking to myself. Yes, master. It's very disturbing sometimes when I hear you talking to yourself. Oh my gosh! I just just had it. Where did it go? Oh, I have to organize my paint area. Oh, the one gray. Here we go, right there. So, some of you have, who've used Celeste Gray might have noticed that um, as it dries, it kind of has a little bit of a glossy reflective surface to it. And it dries, um, tends to separate, the pigment tends to separate, which makes it look like you have to paint more. And like I said, avoid painting more. When you go on to the layer, with the layer paint, Oath One Gray, you want to be especially aware that you do not overload your brush. And that you paint this layer on by concentrating the color with short strokes and feathering where the material would be stretched the tightest. So where the folds are, down the back, I'm using vertical strokes here. And you want to feather the ends so they don't end too abruptly. The more feather strokes you get in there, the more they'll blend from far away. The less you have to worry about creating a very abrupt Um, the thing about white, such a hard color to paint effectively, like with the black, we're not painting up in another layer of lighter black or dark gray. We're just highlighting the edges. With white, I found that although it's it looks better in the end, you go through a lot of trouble by having to paint the gray the, the light gray and then when we finish we're gonna finish with white scar but that's a little bit of a of a look at what you want like to look like do the front here really quickly do the shoulders or the the upper body the arms Call it a day. So 
still thinking about fluff for this guy. I like the idea that he was um, one of the first guys to, this trooper was one of the first to run out of ammo and use his his gun as a as a club to beat the enemy over the head with. I think they were fighting, were they fighting Chaos Warriors? Storm of Chaos, so that'd make the most sense. I'm gonna say that this guy was not a coward. He did not shirk his duty. He was fighting for family, for his city-state. Maybe ooh, maybe it was uh, Fenlagen was the hamlet that he lived in. I have to do a little bit more research to find out like how big this was. It a village? Was it a city? Was it a town? How many people lived there? A little bit. See see what I could find out about the firelocks. I'm sure it's in the. Uh, uniforms and heraldry book. I'm just gonna have to dig it out from somewhere. <clears throat> Wherever it appears to be hiding in my house. Or it's better to have to go back and do another coating then to repaint. And there you go. Fortunately, you can't really see the separation or the difference from the front. It just looks like he's got a black uniform, but from the back, you can definitely tell that he belongs to Osland. The black with the white and the uh, red spot color of the feather, dead giveaways. Oh man, Citadel paints. Don't get upset by the way the paint is sitting on the figure, Master. No, but it just it looks so terrible. When we, whenever I feel angry and like I want to do something we, I might regret later, I just remember to center myself with the meditative power of yoga. how much time I'm spending on this just getting the <clears throat> the whites painted up to the best that I can because it's such a frustrating color ah. we're gonna end there and hope you guys enjoyed it we're going to uh, oh should we do shading now now let's wait till the next one I think this video is running a little bit longer already so base coats done we're uh, is there anything else I can add before we start doing the shading? Yes. Yes, there is. There's always more we can add. I'm going to take um, Balthazar Gold. Where's my Balthazar Gold? Oh, Master, you're hopeless. Yeah, maybe I will <laughs> wait till the next time um, for that. I am going to take some Xandri dust and I'm going to do the um, wood grain on the rifle. Having learned many wood grain techniques from painting the Stroyans, just creating thin lines. Squiggly. The 
thinner you can make these, the better. Found the Balthazar gold. So that's, this is gonna be our last thing that we paint. We're gonna paint it onto the hilts of the daggers, the little cross on the forehead, or on the hat, and a little fire locking control mechanism there, right there on the, the handgun. And that's gonna do it for this episode. A little bit more to the hair actually before we go. Karak Stone is gonna be our last highlight for his blonde mustache. This one we're just flicking on the bottom. those darker rounds in the shadows. Let's do more, let's do more, I'm on a roll. No, no, no. Save, save the rest for later. Dawnstone. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at my model, turning it in my hand in the light, and I'm trying to see where the softest reflections would be. You don't want these to pop out of nowhere, you do want them to make sense. So again, we're following the lines of the clothes. Try not to create too harsh of a, of a highlight. I give you Austin players props, man. I give you guys credit. I don't like highlighting black. I don't like highlighting white. That's why I don't collect black Templars. And it's why I don't think I'll ever collect an Austin army. For those of you who have either of those, then I give you guys a lot of credit. I'm not gonna worry too much because when we add the sh uh, shades, I think a lot of these will get toned down. Okay, sorry if that was, man, every time I look over at the computer screen, it looks super blurry, so I, I apologize for that, but here is our guy. We're going to end off with that today. Thanks for watching. Join us next time for shades and highlights. <laughs>